Lights and Shadows, Part 2. So in a previous tutorial, we talked about uh, cast shadows. So now we're going to look at, at form shadows. So uh, form shadow, an example here on the spout of the teapot and um, on the surface of the teapot uh, behind it. Uh, these shadows form when a surface is angled uh, facing away from the uh, light source. And we know already that uh, as a surface is tilted away from a light source, the illumination uh, decreases on the surface, basically, because the light is spread over uh, more area. So here where the surface is facing the light source, uh, we have more light rays hitting it, whereas when it's uh, turned away from it, uh, those there's not a many, as many light rays, and so it's not as brightly illuminated. Here's an example of a directional light source uh, shining on a diffuse uh, sphere and a diffuse uh, floor. Uh, on the sphere, we see that the part of the sphere that is facing the light source is brightest, and as we turn and go towards the back, the light is getting uh, dimmer and dimmer as it is uh, spreading um, over the uh, area which is uh, turning away from the source. And then behind the um, sphere, uh, no light is uh, reaching that part. Now there's another effect besides this effect of angle, which is the distance uh, from a light source to an object. Uh, this is only for non-directional uh, light sources, so for a directional light source it doesn't really have a distance, but for something like a point light source, uh, the l illumination on a surface is weakened because the light rays uh, from a, say, a point light source are spreading over a larger area. For a point light, that spread is uh, quadratic. And we can see that here in this um, little video where we're, we see a candle which is brought uh, near a wall. And so notice the illumination on the wall. And then as we move the candle away from the wall, uh, the wall uh, is rather dark. And then we bring it in again. And uh, notice it's very bright closest to the candle, and then it drops off rather um, rapidly uh, with distance. Um, there's also a bit of an angle effect there as well. We also see this uh, effect of uh, decreasing um, value with uh, distance uh, just in simple perspective. So uh, in this example, just imagine that uh, this first character is five feet from the camera, the next one's 10 feet from the camera, 15, 20. Uh, so you can immediately see just from geometry that the character who is twice as far from the camera, uh, their face is actually one quarter the area. And the one that is four times as far away from uh, the camera as the closest one, uh, their size is uh, 16 times uh, smaller. So this uh, quadratic uh, decrease is the same thing that we see with um, the decreasing intensity of, the, of a point light source. Uh, you can uh, see this for yourself uh, if you make a pair of cards. Uh, one of them is uh, four times the size of the other one. Uh, take the large one, hold it at arm's length, and then take the smaller one and move it uh, in front of your face until it appears to be the same size as the large card. Uh, close one eye so that uh, you can get a good focus. And what you'll discover is that uh, when the two of them are the same apparent size, the small one is half the distance um, that the large one is, uh, even though it's, it's one quarter the size. This is just a linear perspective. Now, this effect of decreasing intensity with uh, distance combines with the effect of decreasing 
intensity as the form turns away from the light source. So with a point light source, uh, of course, it's going to be brightest uh, where the light rays are hitting uh, head on. And uh, for a sphere, that's also the closest point to the uh, light source. And then as we move uh, around the sphere, we have both increasing distance and increasing angle until we reach the uh, terminator and then it's uh, black uh, behind it. Uh, here we see two some examples from uh, Maya where we set up a point light uh, from a sphere. Uh, in the rendered image on the left, uh, this is when we have no decay of the intensity with distance. So the form shadow is entirely due to uh, angle. On the right, we have a more realistic uh, point light source, like as if it was from, a, say, a candle. And then the um, form shadow uh, is both from uh, angle and uh, distance. So you see a very different uh, type of um, illumination in these two cases. Now, much of the illumination that we see in a scene or in um, uh, just everyday life is not a direct illumination from a light source, but rather uh, a form of ambient light that is uniformly uh, lighting the environment. So much of this is not from any particular single source, but a combination of reflections from uh, many surfaces. In uh, Maya, they have an option for an ambient light, which uh, actually has an adjustable parameter called the ambient shade. And if this uh, ambient shade is set to zero, then it's a true ambient light that is uh, uniformly illuminating from all directions. If the uh, ambient shade is set to one, then the ambient light acts uh, just like a, a point light. And you can have a, a mixture of the of the two. You see an uh, example here of a rendered image using a directional light uh, plus a fully ambient light. And of course, the ambient light uh, illuminates uh, into the cast shadow. Uh, you can compare that with having just the directional light. Now, as I said, the uh, source of ambient light is often the reflection off of various uh, surfaces in the environment. And uh, in these photos, you can see this effect of reflected light. So in the uh, photo on the top, uh, we have a, a sphere. And uh, behind the sphere, if we only had a uh, the single a uh, spotlight shining on it and no reflected light, then it would be uh, completely dark behind the sphere. However, due to the proximity of this illuminated red wall uh, behind the sphere, we see a uh, red light uh, shining from that red wall, illuminating the back of the sphere. Uh, the second photo uh, is another example. <clears throat> In this case, you can compare the back of the sphere that is closest to the uh, dark uh, black wall compared to uh, another part of the sphere uh, which is closer to the uh, bright uh, blue floor. And um, you see that uh, not only is the uh, lower part of the sphere illuminated with uh, reflected light from the blue floor, but uh, the part closest to the black wall is not illuminated, illuminated at all, and that's the darkest uh, part of the sphere. Now, by uh, default, simple uh, illumination uh, rendering algorithms don't represent this reflected light. They only have light uh, that is directly from uh, light sources. However, there's a class of algorithms in computer graphics known as global illumination, and they include both direct illumination from light sources and also light reflected by 
surfaces, this kind of reflected light, this indirect illumination that we've been talking about. You can see that in this uh, comparison of these uh, two rendered images. The one with local uh, illumination has no reflected light from the red wall on the ceiling, while the one with global illumination, you see uh, red light has been reflected onto uh, the ceiling. Now, a very important uh, light source uh, outdoors in daytime is uh, the sky, uh, not just the sun, but the sky itself, the uh, atmosphere. And uh, this tends to be a bluish uh, ambient light that uh, comes from uh, all directions uh, from above. And of course, it, it varies due to um, time of day and weather conditions, whether it's overcast, clear, or so forth. Now, even when we have uh, a bright uh, day with lots of ambient light coming from the sky, uh, we still have uh, shadows that can occur due to occlusion. So occlusion is when we have, uh, say, a shadow under a car or a shadow uh, where two uh, surfaces are close to each other. Uh, basically, uh, situations where even though we have illumination coming from uh, basically all directions, uh, just due to the geometry, uh, not much light uh, gets into a uh, crevice or a, a fold. Uh, you see in this photo, there's, there's no cast shadows. It's a um, overcast day, so there's lots of ambient light. However, there's still an occlusion shadow uh, under the car. Now, uh, kind of an interesting uh, situation with lighting is uh, in space. And the distinction here is we don't have uh, ambient light uh, due to the atmosphere. So for example, these uh, photos uh, taken on the moon, because the uh, moon has no atmosphere, uh, the cast shadows are extremely uh, dark because there's no illumination from ambient uh, skylight. Now, there is a significant amount of reflected light because the lunar surface uh, in most parts of the moon is, is highly reflective. So you see uh, a fair bit of reflected light on the uh, lunar lander, even on the side, which is uh, not facing the sun. Uh, here's a uh, image from uh, the Transformers Dark of the Moon uh, film. And uh, there's some interesting uh, shadows here, not all of them consistent. Uh, the form shadow on the Earth uh, in the scene uh, looks quite good. And there's a cast shadow from the uh, lunar vehicle. Uh, but this uh, large alien uh, spaceship doesn't seem to have any uh, cast uh, shadows anywhere. So uh, this would be uh, fine if there was a significant amount of um, ambient light uh, illuminating it, but uh, even with uh, reflected light, there should be uh, some cast shadows uh, from that vehicle. It, it still looks pretty cool though. So in uh, summary, uh, form shadows occur when a surface is angled away from the light source. Light intensity decreases as the distance from the light source increases. So we have both this effect of, of angle and uh, distance. Uh, reflection of light from surfaces makes them uh, effectively light sources, so this is reflected light. Uh, ambient light is non-directional, uh, typically due to uh, reflected light or scattered light in the uh, atmosphere. This is uh, the sky is blue from uh, scattering. Uh, and the uh, daytime sky is a significant uh, light source that uh, should be considered uh, when thinking about lighting.